Good morning, everyone. Well, I'm here to talk about the um, social economic concept that has actually evolved in the last four years, uh, things that we are working on. Uh, I'm going to tell the story, the concept, and we hope that with this 15-minute session um, that you have a brief understanding of what we do. And we believe that this is something which is quite different from uh, just um, the CSR concepts that we've been living on in the past maybe 20, 30 years uh, with large corporations. We feel that we have to do a little bit more. And this is where uh, I'm here today. Um, L plus H Community Interest Company was um, conceived and initiated because of the financial crisis. Uh, it is a group of entrepreneurs um, uh, who have the thought that we have to do something. The world is coming to you know, this issue in which the poorer will become the poorer. So it is not just every year you give something to the community and you expect things to be done. So we want to get our hands dirty uh, to get things done. So what does it stand for? Um, you can explain it in two ways, L plus H, love uh, and hope, right? However, I want to look at it this way. As love, you create more value, then it becomes hope. Then the objectives are, you know, that we want to do something about ho for Hong Kong, because a lot of people may think Hong Kong is actually a very wealthy uh, region. But in fact, you know, the poor, actually very poor. So as people who have been living in Hong Kong, we feel that it's something that we have to put our eggs on. Uh, so we talk about the Hong Kong spirit. Uh, we talk about an upward spiral. You see the, the logo here, uh, which means the release from poverty. So hopefully people get unwind and, uh, from the poverty and then they get released. So uh, reciprocacy. So we feel that it is to give you something more to give. You receive, but you also have to give. Uh, the can-do spirit of Hong Kong, and aspire to do the best, which means that you're looking at not only quantity. We understand a lot of work is being done, a lot of social work is being done, but we are looking at you know, um, quality of the, the outcome as well. Um, on the social branding, we feel that uh, we are young, so we are not established like a lot of the social organizations. That means you have to build your brand, uh, just like in business. So we are coming in from, uh, on this business angle, uh, we are talking about that it has to, in order to build a brand, first of all, and the most important of all, is actually the people. The people you can attract, the talents that you can attract, which is the, and also the, the various knowledge, right? Um, so the stakeholders, we tend to not look at it as only the people we, we want to act on because through this action, basically, a number of stakeholders get involved and act on, actually. So let's look at it on a wider perspective. So this is what we will have to work on. Uh, not only the underprivileged groups, but the various service providers that we link the services to our uh, projects, the community, the government in terms of some uh, lobbying action, uh, and then the funding bodies, of course, uh, our sponsors. Now, this is the model. We tend to like business because we're all business people. So like business, we have a holding company called L plus H CIC Limited, and under which um, is L plus H Fashion, L plus H Leather. These two are social enterprises. Uh, and uh, hopefully that will, they will, you know, as time grows, that they will generate sufficient profit to fund the various foundations uh, that will be built. And currently we have only two, which is we are Family Foundation Limited and L plus H Creation Foundation Limited. And I'll explain uh, each of its function and its interaction within this, this group. Uh, the vision, of course, is to do good with the community and for the community. All of the things comes into the mission. So the mission, the first thing is that for the immediate people with the immediate needs, we have to create jobs. It's a kind of enablement, right? But creating jobs is not going to, to help the rest because the, you, that means you have to step up your engine to create more and more jobs because more and more from the bottom, as time goes on, will move forward to be people who need your help who people who need jobs, and there's an economy going on in a lot of your countries and, our, and ours, as we know, that more and more people are out of jobs. 
So this engine must be stepped up. And in order to do that, which means we have to do other things which come into the, the foundations. That means we have to help to release the poverty of the children through knowledge. And that uh, is the education enrichment to the unprivileged children so that eventually they help themselves. Right? And then the second is also the underprivileged youth. These are the teenagers who are about to step into the community or perhaps have stepped into the community without much education or perhaps and doing things uh, in which, which are illegal or things that we don't want to see. Right? So our mission is three steps concurrently done, which is the jobs creation, the, the help on education and training for the, the underprivileged children which are in the primaries, and then the work on the teenagers who are in their secondaries or perhaps out of school. Um, I'm not going to drill a lot into some of these slides because uh, a lot of you come from um, all the um, e different economies and you know that uh, by in Syria eight we have the financial crisis and that triggers that um, we have, we felt that Though the world is not coming to an end, but in a very critical stage in which we have to do something. So we then scanned the social landscape in Hong Kong, and we found that there are certain demands from donors that are not satisfied, like in business. I mean, we are very used to doing strategic planning, you know, assessments. So we actually scan, and then we feel that these are the things that we need to do different, uh, and that the um, government... Uh, has in CU7 has established also a commission on poverty, uh, hopefully to support and further develop the social enterprises. So this is like business. This is the right timing to do something. And then on the market, of course, that the high cost in the neighboring countries and mainly China is going up through the inflation, labor costs, land costs. So the gap with Hong Kong and also with China is not so wide anymore. So it becomes a narrowing of the gap in which there are opportunities maybe to create back some business in Hong Kong um, that is pure Hong Kong based, right? And that comes into the uh, thoughts of um, that we ha want the made in Hong Kong. We, uh, instead of just made in China and made in Italy, uh, which means by creating jobs, you have to use um, a vehicle or vehicles that create uh, a lot of like that things that you do by hand, right? And you need, need people, right? And that uh, there must be uh, things in which the whole sort of one-stop service serve all. So that's the reason we choose fashion, which is the most difficult, right? The, on doing so, we have analyzed and evaluated and debated uh, in which we don't want to get displacement. That means we are not going to displace people who are already doing good by creating jobs, by we creating jobs and compete with them. So that's why the Made in Hong Kong also, because we don't want to do things in China and then sell in Hong Kong, then what are we different? What value are we creating? So instead, we do the most difficult thing where people left 20, 30 years ago and think that this is not going to work. So we sort of recreate uh, something that we think will, will work, which means that we need more talents, more experience, uh, business experiences to handhold. And the milestone is that uh, we have this thought process searching for, for the right thing to do. Then um, we set up, we are uh, uh, L plus H community interest company in 08. Uh, end of it, we created uh, Fashion, uh, which is a knitwear uh, factory uh, with this retail end. Uh, we then set up, we are family foundation, which is for the education and training for the primary children. Uh, then the leather community interest company because we are not satisfied with just use of knitting machines that is not creating a lot of value added work. So we want a craft retention uh, through, this, through this business. Uh, and then the creations for the teenagers. Right. Uh, and then we look at the context in Hong Kong. We do not have a charity law. Right? It was proposed, it was consulted, but it has never come into uh, reality. So that means if we want people to support us, we have to be transparent, we have to be self-regulated. And then that's why we adopt the UK context uh, in which we look at the community interest company, right? What is appropriate, right? In it, 
we actually said in our memorandum of article and association that there are two clauses uh, which contain you know, the uh, assets within the corporation, uh, especially the holding company, uh, which is the funding vehicle. Right? One is asset lock, one is the dividend uh, cap. Right? The asset lock means that the assets in the company, whether it's cash or machinery, whatever type of assets, are not to be allocated outside of community interest companies. That means it has to be always retained for social purposes. And then secondly is that uh, the, the dividend, right? There will be some dividend payout if indeed it will be profit making, but we want to retain it to one tenth of the capital uh, or perhaps 35% of the net profit, whichever is lower. In that way, our donors can actually get the capital back if it becomes profitable so that they can apply it to other things that we are creating or perhaps that they can use it for uh, somewhere which they think of better value. And then at the management level, we want to set up um, little, uh, the, the, although smaller, but policies and guidelines, I mean, like the corporations. I mean, if we want to be transparent, if we want to be sustainable, we have to be establishing ourselves so that these guidelines are followed by the executive management. Of course, we have to set up IT platforms just like any other uh, businesses. And compliance, legal, and risk management being some of the key factors that we have been continuously uh, evaluating and improving on, especially on the clarity of roles and responsibilities. Because every, unlike in business, every shareholder is actually a sponsor, be it big or small. That means everyone has a voice. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's not exactly like in board meetings because then everybody wants to do something good, all right? If they see something that they want to do more, then they will come in and say, hey, this is something we want to do. So we, the, the executive management team have to establish itself, first of all, below, uh, below the, the executive level, the clarity of roles and responsibility of different types of work, just like any corporation. But above is how to manage this situation with numerous, numerous funding sponsors who each of them want something done differently. And then ultimately, we think that it is not all the social enterprises, it cannot be just like in Hong Kong, you set up a company, because that's what I know most of the corporations or social enterprises in Hong Kong, they are established through the company ordinance when there is no control in effect because there's no charity law. So therefore, we, we, in order to control ourselves, because ultimately there will be many, many different executives taking up the role, so that framework must be very rigid and clear that uh, there will be transparency, there will be uh, control in terms of CIC. So all of the social enterprises now are CICs, community interest companies, with the same asset lock, dividend cap regulation. Uh, and then we look at sustainability brand. These are things that I want to you know, go through very quickly. Then becomes the fashion uh, where uh, Help and Six Fashion was set up now as a knitwear factory in Tuen Mun. Uh, creating jobs for about 80 employees, uh, and uh, it's made in Hong Kong. And this is where we are now. Um, there is a retail uh, outlet in Central Stanley Street that sells the products, and we want to have the best quality. The, that means we, unlike normal corporations, we want the best at a mediocre price. That means affordable by a larger community. What we want is different. Profit objective, yes, is important for the future, but this is not all that we want. We want more jobs. That means as long as you produce a certain profit margin so as to regenerate into a future research and development costs, that is okay, but we want more jobs, right? So this is where we are, the factory itself with the designers, uh, and uh, we have workshops nearly every day to teach the workers, all right, deal with day-to-day -day life, day-to-day, -day, you know, um, how to deal with their own situations to make them more, um, to make them more sort of like happy uh, with what they are doing. Uh, and then comes another leather concept in which we think more sort of handmade work is needed because Hong Kong is so used to very superficial mass production, machine production, uh, as we feel that uh, we must have some quality. And we think also that the market or the, the community is coming to a point where lifestyle is more important. So that's why it is created to reserve 
or to uh, make sure that the, ha the, the handicrafts of our old workers whom has, who has lost job because in going in businesses going into China, we want to help, help them to pass on this skill to the younger generation, people who, who really want to work or who, who really have interest. Uh, and then this is talking about the business um, survival, right? Uh, with accepting the lower margins, which I have explained before, and the craftsmanship retention. Now, this is where the leather workshop is like. Everything, the tools, right? You see the tools here, you see the, the older generation, and then teaching the younger generation. And this is the product. Uh, in fact, we have to thank Trade Development Council, our products is being sold in the design gallery. Right? Uh, creations is to aim to inspire the less privileged youth through personal arts training, right? Uh, and uh, we have created a, a musical with um, uh, several perf four performances, which is to build discipline, to build self-confidence and motivation. And this is what it is like. Then we are family foundation for the primary children. Right? Um, we have four centers, uh, uh, 850 children that are, we are, that, that are being served daily. Um, and uh, we are moving towards from a, pr a number of foundations supporting us now to the next stage, which is uh, seeking public funding. I think in the next three years will be the different uh, from what we are today. Right? Uh, the, the, how it works is that we have a combination or the integration of educators with social workers, which is rare because it is very difficult to get them work together. Each has its different views about how children should be taught. Right? Uh, but we manage through these difficult times that we have uh, different classes, we have various value-added classes, and we have uh, Dare to Dream uh, for the social workers and the smart kids. Uh, the idea is to expand their thoughts. For example, we bring them out to, to different um, um, uh, industries to let them know because they're of their exposure is too narrow, they haven't even gone to town. But we want them to understand there are different things if they get educated, they can do. So these 850 children are nominated by 63 schools, who primary schools around our centers uh, on the two criteria. They must come from very uh, marginal families, but their families are not receiving government subsidy. That means they really need help, right? Because government um, re uh, receiving subsidies are where a lot of the corporations are helping this group right now. So we want them uh, to live respectfully, uh, but they are um, very poor in terms of academics or perhaps in terms of their personality. Right? So every term, we get together like 800 these type of children, all sort of running around, very noisy, not listening, to by the time they leave us, they are you know, very positive looking. Uh, they, are, they, they want to help people, they want to reciprocate, and these are the mission in which I have just illustrated, right? So these are the, the stakeholders uh, that have actually been you know, involved. And this is what you can see, right? They, and in fact, recently, uh, the chief, executive, uh, uh, chief secretary has actually visited us. Thank you. Well, if we think about achievements, I think we have a long way to go. But we are talking about attracting people with the like minds to come to us. We created jobs, we have actually changed, we have uh, research results to prove that some of the, the, the children you know, that we are working on are really getting you know, positive results. Uh, we have created like-minded people and we hope that we will turn it into a movement. So as everybody, I mean, unlike business, we want to share so that the bigger community will work along those lines, uh, will work along more the total solution instead of segmented approach in social services, will work along as like looking at quality rather than quantity. Um, and the longer term sustainability, we feel that we have to stay focused what, on what we are doing. We have to attract more human capital that, is, uh, uh, that are passionate and dedicated, right? Um, this is what we feel the challenges are about, the sustainability, where you are first mover, it's very difficult to get people to understand what you're doing. And it took us a lot of time trying to 
tell you know, our possible sponsors, potential sponsors, and to even educate the newcomers who come into our uh, business or you come into the organization, what is the objective, what is the motivation, right? and what we want to achieve, and the acceptability of what we want to do, the management of the dilemma between a business management for success for social work to the lost generation, and all these talk about mindset changes. So thank you all. Um, this is all I have to talk about. And uh, these challenges hopefully goes into development and uh, to a movement. Thank you.